in their process has gone through MEPA and gotten a certificate from the Envi Secretary of Environmental Affairs. They have been through the Hadley Conservation Commission and have approval of the project. No. And they have been through um, uh, Natural Heritage and have a conservation management plan proposed that they will implement. So basically of this 45 uh, acres, there is less than, I believe it's less than 10 acres will be used for building, drainage, roadways, landscaping coming in, all of that. And there will be about 35 acres that will be permanently preserved. 12 acres will be habitat. Uh, the five colleges will um, create the appropriate habitat for the spadefoot toad. Um, and they will maintain that habitat. That will be maintained um, in perpetuity and it will be at the expense of five colleges. The remainder of the land will be under a conservation restriction which will prevent development. Uh, five colleges intends to enter into an agreement with a local conservation organization who will manage it and five colleges will endow a fund to pay for the management, ongoing management of it into the future. That management will be things like cutting or mowing trails, keeping them open, appropriate signage and appropriate um, maintenance. Um, and that fund will be negotiated between the conservation agency and five colleges. It is proposed that that land will be open to the public during daylight hours. It will not be open to the public in the evening, um, but it will be open for hiking, for snowshoeing, for cross-country skiing, walking dogs, that, that type of thing. It has been used for that now, a fair amount of it, and it will continue to be, but it will be more formal, and it will be allowed by the conservation restriction. So out of this 45 acres, about 35 will be preserved forever, and the balance will be this 112,000 square foot building plus parking and um, driveways. You went most of, over most of the engineering last time, so I'm not going to bore you with it. But basically, the uh, applicant is committed to a form of lighting that will be activated, motion activated, so the lights will not have to be on. Even when people are in the building, they will not have to be on in the parking lot until somebody leaves the building. They will monitor the site with infrared cameras to pick up any uh, move, movement and any for security purposes. Um, and the lights will be downcast and they will be operated by um, motion detectors. Those motion detectors can be set to not go off at certain hours depending on how they want to do it, but it will not be something where the lights are on for any security purposes. There are no lights on the outside of the building. They're just parking lot lights and they will be activated by uh, movement. The site will create virtually no traffic. There will be a van that comes twice a day to pick up and deliver books. As um, Hampshire College orders a book, the van will come and pick it up, take it to Hampshire College, and then it will bring it back. That van is believed to be needed twice a day. There will be 12 employees who come every day. There will be meetings in those two meeting ha halls, one that holds 12 people and one that holds 20. Um, don't know how often that will be, but we provided the parking for it, but I don't think this will pr produce uh, but neg negligible traffic. Um, it, one of the beauties of this site is even though it seems that the building might be large, in other areas of town, and I've given you a list of a bunch of other buildings and their sizes, each one of those bu buildings was required to provide twice as much parking as square footage. So if we, as floor square footage. So as we take something like a Home Depot at 120,000 square feet, there's somewhere near 240,000 square feet of asphalt or site that has been disturbed. Our parking, I believe, and my math isn't great, but I believe our parking at 200 square foot feet per space is going to take up something less than 10,000 square feet. So it is a much smaller impact than the retail buildings around that provide all that parking. And you have a list of those buildings, Home Depot is 120, Lowe's is 139, Hampshire Mall is 3, 
49. But you have a list of those to compare, but this building does not provide that parking, therefore it doesn't provide that disruption to the site. Um, <clears throat> you have in your, um, well, the, the other issues are that the site will create very little, if any, need for municipal services. It will pay for its water and sewer like everybody else does. Uh, we believe that the pr uh, police activity will be minimal, probably less than what's on the site now with the college kids. Um, and uh, it is fully sprinkled. It has hydrants. So we believe that the fire service will not be in, in use. And you have a letter in that packet from the fire chief and from the... the, the, the Approval letters from sewer water. Yeah, they've got them in the package. So those are all in there. And... Uh, and uh, Mike Klamoski has opined on the roadway. So it's our belief that very little of the municipal services will be used by this building. Um, I know it's been a concern of some of you that, gee, it's a tax-free building, doesn't pay taxes, but it also doesn't use a lot of the services. It's not going to put kids in school. It's not going to use much, if any, fire or um, police service. Um, and some of the benefits to... Um, to this project are the benefits of having five colleges as a neighbor are that five colleges contributes, uh, I think last year they contributed $166,000 to the town of Hadley towards your bill from PVTA. Um, I think your bill was 204000 maybe they contributed 166 of that. They also um, have made available to the town of, they built a private um, high-speed fiber optic line from Springfield to the colleges, and they have given Hadley, I think, the opportunity to use up to four of those fibers. To the best of my knowledge, the town hasn't used them yet. They're in discussions with the, uh, with the grade school about tying into it, but that is free high-speed fiber optic cables for the town. And one of the benefits that we all get from five colleges is we can use the, the libraries. The UMass Belt Library in particular is a public library. You can go there and order a book that might be stored in this uh, <coughs> library annex, and they will get it for you, and you have every right, as much right as any student, to do that. If it's a Smith College book, you can still order it through the UMass library, um, and you can, you can have use of this. So the point is that although the facility will not be paying taxes, it does provide as a neighbor. Yes, sir? It could decrease the amount of taxes the town receives, though, because if the properties decrease in value that's around it, we're going to have accessible, an accessible tax base that's less than exists currently. So you could I, be costing, costing the town taxes, couldn't you? You could, but I have never seen 35 acres of conservation land diminish anybody's values. And I think if you look at those pictures, um, the view from, from most of those neighborhoods, if you start at the ground and go all the way up, is right now as you start with the roof of the Lane Manor, you go to Home Depot, Depot, you go to Hampshire Mall, and then you see the beautiful mountains. This, as best I can tell from the renderings that have been done, this is not going to be visible in the summertime, and it will be very um, limited visibility in the, um, in the winter. So I don't perceive that those property values would go down at all. Um, but, you know, anything is possible. It is also possible that those property values will go up because I have permanently preserved space there. And I know that it can't be 10 houses, 5 houses, 30 houses, whatever it is. And I have use of 35 acres of land that I can walk my dog on. I do it now, but not as a matter of right, um, that I will have a, a right to do. So it's our belief that we meet all of the requirements of the statute, better known as the Dover Amendment. We think that your or we know that your council agrees with that. Um, we think that we provide great benefit to the colleges, and we think we provide benefit to the town. We think we have worked hard to reduce the size of the building. And, and one of the things in the reduction is that being an educational institution, our vision, or their vision, is very long. Um, and they need to know that they have a facility that's going to serve their purposes for quite some time. Um, and they've gone back and worked the numbers and, you know, th this 20% reduction, we can live with it, we can do it. Um, so I think if I 
am correct that we have satisfied all of the municipal departments. We've satisfied CONCOM, we've satisfied Natural Heritage, we've satisfied the Secretary of Environmental Affairs, and now we're here before you and the neighbors to try to satisfy you, which I think we've made a big step towards that. What I think the issue with everybody is going to continue to be, it's a big building. And it is not a small building, but it is in relationship to its site at five and a half or six percent coverage. I don't think anybody's going to find that that is overburdening the site or is large. Is it worse than five um, 20,000 square foot buildings? I don't think so. I think that we leave a lot of open space to look at, and I would urge you to consider um, that this is the proper size. It is, as the courts have said throughout these cases, it is a balancing act between the municipal needs and the educational needs. And I think that Five Colleges has tried to balance that with re reduction in the um, size of the building. So we would like welcome discussion on any of the issues that you see. If I've been too light on the Dover Amendment, I'm happy to defend that uh, for a long time, but I think that your town council has done that, so I don't need to, but if you wish to, I will. Um, and that's pretty much it. Question for the board. Yes, sir. I saw the opinion of our legal counsel, and I didn't really see him tell us why this is an educational facility under the Dover Amendment. Why does a warehouse that has a little uh, foot coming out there, we're told may have seminar rooms and or lecture halls in it, which, uh, why is that an educational facility? What will that building do to further the education of Smith, Mount Holyoke, Hampshire, UMass, and Annapolis College students? My personal view is that the 8,800 square foot of administrative space is ancillary to the um, educational use. I don't think anybody threw those two rooms on there to say, oh, we're educational, we're going to have seminars. I think that there is no question that the most important thing other than teachers that an educational use has is books and materials. This no, that's not what we were told at the last meeting. Okay, I, I, told, I, started that, I started that with my personal opinion. I was not at the last meeting, and my you personal were opinion. Told that there would be potential seminars and or lectures oh, in there. Oh, there will be, but I don't believe that that room was put on there so that we could say it's an educational <coughs> purpose. I think your council said a library annex is an educational purpose. Um, whether you're storing the books for someone to retrieve and bring to a student or a professor, mm -hmm. or whether you're allowing the student or professor to walk in and get the book, I don't think changes the educational use of it. Yes, sir. Well, I think you've made some strides into appeasing the uh, the neighbors regarding the site, and uh, I think you were a little bit too generous to yourself, saying that you only got to develop five percent of the property. You're limited by the spade-toed frog. You're limited by wetlands. This property is a very, very difficult build, and I think you're taking a little bit too much credit for yourself and your your people by no limiting it to only 5%. No credit to me, but let me be clear that 5% is the building. It is closer to 10% for the overall coverage, parking and, okay. and the detention basin and all that. So don't I don't want to mislead you. I'll take a lot more credit than I'm due, but I don't want to mislead you. Um, but but so the, the, the site is what I'm getting at mm -hmm. is that, uh, and there was some questions about uh, uh, Hiding it with a little bit of landscaping, it will making it less visible. Uh, and uh, I don't see any landscaping there. So uh, is there? The last comment was, well, we will rely on the natural trees and brush around it. What? But what we do have just to, is this is pretty tree. Uh, this is shielded from the houses. You know, in between one, you may get some. It was truly, it was our thought that growing 16 maple trees along the side there would do absolutely nothing to uh, make their views any better. That 
along here, if there were some places that were a little weak, you know, maybe that makes some sense, you know, pick a number 100 feet from somebody's uh, house in their the backyard. Because the closest house here is almost 700 feet, not quite 700 feet away. Um, so I think that putting a personal opinion, and I think five colleagues and the site designers agree, throwing some trees in here really isn't going to help the problem. If the board said, sure, we'll, we'll grant you this if you throw 27 maple trees against the building, that would do that. And one final comment, yes. I'll wait for the neighbors to agree or disagree with this one. Uh, it is a large building, and it does have a, a bunker site mentality. I would like to see, as Verizon does, some balloons put on the corners so that the neighbors could visualize how big it is and where it's going to be located. And in the fall, when all the leaves and trees are, are bare, what will it look like? Where will it be in relation to my house, et cetera, et cetera? Um, we tried to do that in these. And one thing, this thing. Uh, you, you made a, an attempt, no, but. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I glossed over and I shouldn't have is the cross section to show what somebody at that high meadow view that we gave you, right. what the elevation changes are. So, yes, you can look down, you know, there's vegetation, but we are the. 34 and a half feet is about the highest point in the building, and that is at about ground level at High Meadow. It's um, it is uh, from Rocky Hill. It is about here. So the the building, as you can see in these, is depressed quite a bit. I thought that these helped a great deal to s try to show the size of the building and where it was, and. You know, right now, I'm not sure with all the vegetation on the trees that, that this is going to do anybody any good to do that. Um, but I'm not saying we won't do that, but it's, it's, we've made a good faith effort to get wintertime pictures to show what it would be like um, in, the, in that time. And one thing that I did forget to mention was there was some concern about noise. So we did refine the, um, the uh, noise report. Thank you. And basically what we came up with, as you were told last time, I think, uh, the lion's share of the heating and cooling and dehumidifying equipment is actually inside the building. Obviously there are roof compressors, but a great deal of this is inside the building. So we asked them to do a study on, you know, from each one of the sites where the uh, unit might be mounted, what the decibel level is. And as you get out, I think the closest one is either this blue line or this green line, the Rocky Hill the blue line to um, North Maple. The decibels are 30, in the 30s. Um, decibels at 30, uh, it is the noise and source would be a quiet rural area. At 40, it would be <coughs> library, bird calls, lowest level of ambient urban ambient noise. So I think they have addressed the issue of noise. They addressed it before the last hearing, but it's been addressed and they've studied it to figure out what that really would be. Um, so this is also in your packet, but it does show you at different distances from the units what the noise levels are. Yeah, I specifically asked for that. Yeah. I find it easier if you look at the big picture, <laughs> but you may be able to figure that out. Right. This is cool. And we start with the units and move out to the various um, 31.5 decibels, 37 way in here. This one is 31.5. And then the, the uh, if anybody cares, a jet takeoff at 25 meters away is 150 decibels. How about a dog, a dog barking? <coughs> how, how loud is that, Jim? Pardon? To get some perspective, when a dog barks, how... I, depending on the dog. I know, yeah, I knew you were going to say from, that. From, 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 we did this once before. With, with the dog, doggy we, daycare. Yeah, well, we did this once before when we were looking at decibel noises. Um, Company came in. I've got what it was. was it no, it wasn't doggy day, daycare. Or something else. And it actually had the sound meter, which was good. I had to bring the sound meter in. 
with absolutely nobody making a noise in the room, just the hum of the fluorescent lights is about 45 decibels. This so nobody it. makes a noise. This is quiet. Okay, I gotta say that. It's, it's, it's absolutely 31, 35, 34 decibels. It's not that you won't <coughs> hear it, I don't want to say that, but compared to the surrounding noise on a dead quiet winter night, I wouldn't say a summer night because some summer night with everything, the leaves rustling, even the corn growing, you can hear corn growing at night if there's enough of it around, believe it or not. 20, um, deci 20 decibels is rustling leaves. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and just to put it in further perspective, 60 decibels is con con conversation in a restaurant office, background music, air conditioning. So the office yeah. noise that you're referring to, they say, can be as high as 60. Yeah, but uh, just, just, just like I said, just the, the noise from a fluorescent light is somewhere right around 40, give or take, decibels. That's a, nobody makes a noise, that's what we found out. So it's, it's you know, to get zero decibels is virtually... Well, not impossible, but you're not going to find it in nature. I'm assuming, before we go any further, that, that you are comfortable with the soil erosion plan and whatnot, that we don't need to ad address yeah, that. I don't, I don't think any of those were the issue, because that's, okay. yep. that's just good construction right. practice, right. and we weren't happy. We know that was yep. really And we do have the a clean letter from uh, the consulting engineers. Right. It was all about the aesthetics. Right. Um, Traffic, noise, parking, etc. Any other questions from the board before just we? Just one up? thing. There was a book written in 1968 by Professor Leo Marx at Amherst College called "The Machine in the Garden." And Leo was one of the first environmentalists in the country. And a machine doesn't have to be a smokestack or a locomotive. It can be a building. And this is a case where Five College Inc. is putting a machine in the middle of the garden. I. Don't agree, respectfully. Um, across, that's your, that's your I understand. Across High Meadow, mm -hmm. our, uh, the NES buildings together are significantly larger than this with parking. That's across the street from this. Um, several hundred feet south of this is a 65,000 square foot nursing home. A few hundred square uh, feet south of that is a 120,000 square foot um, retail store with the attendant parking. So I think, personally, this is a better use of this land than seven or eight houses throughout, however you get Although there. Although all of the structures you referred to are in proper zones. For structures that is correct. That but, but I have to emphasize that's not a consideration for this board tonight, according to your town council and, and our research. That the consideration is basically um, you can regulate the coverage, the setbacks, we meet all of those. The height, we meet that. We meet everything, ex but you do have a say as to bulk. Or we but, can recognize the laws being immoral and take a stand. And not you may, um, sure. without att attempting to not sound threatening, because I'm not a threatening guy, yeah. um, that costs us all a lot of money. I, I noticed that the people in North End of Springfield are suing the Hamden County Sheriff's Department in a class action suit because of what they tried to do to that neighborhood. That they have they have um, proposed that I think it's a it's a substance abuse center, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they have proposed that as education. Um, the courts will decide. I mean, we have some some of the case. Uh, it could be quite educational to help me through that problem. <laughs> but the courts have looked at, um, as I said, parking garages at Tufts University. They've looked at uh, a mixture of housing for old guys like me and, uh, and some learning facilities with it. Uh, many of the colleges around here are looking at that kind of thing. But I think the court cases really say that it doesn't take much to be educational. But there is no question that a library annex that stores books for students and professors is educational. I don't think there's any way around that. We may not like the statute. It may be wrong, but it's there, and I think we all have to deal with it. So I think we have attempted, um, as you know, under the process, and your town council actually stated it, um, there is very little law on site plan review for this because most people don't do it. Five colleges had a couple of choices. They could have taken their building plans to Tim Nyhart and said, we want to build this. Give us a building permit. 
he probably would have said, ah, that's a decision I don't want to make. Um, I'm going to deny it. And that appeal would then be to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That is a way to deal with the educational use. And your town council has stated there's not a lot of law on that because people don't seem to come either looking for site plan um, approval if they're in educational use or the board and the educational use negotiate to a point they both realize maybe we're not going to get what we want, but it's better than winding up in court setting precedent, so we'll settle it. Um, but I think Five College's position was, you know, we'll come to the board, it's site plan review, we will present it to them, we'll take their input you know, to an extent, and we'll take the input of the, of the neighbors. We care and want to be wanted. Maybe not loved, but wanted. <laughs> And uh, so we have. I think Neil has had nine meetings, nine meetings with the neighbors. Um, maybe many of them feel he didn't offer enough, but um, it's not that anybody has tried to come in here and run it down your throat. Um, it is the statute, and we believe we fit perfectly. So hypothetically, yes. if the statute were to be amended prospectively, and all you could get is one module. Is this where you want to be with it? This is where we want to be. Could we make that work? No. If the statute were amended and said not 100, and, I shouldn't speak out of turn, but not 112, but 100, could we find a way? Probably. I don't think that does much for the neighbors. I think the neighbors are going to tell you that 20% didn't do much for them. Um, or I'm guessing, maybe they're all happy with it. But, um, you know, what we're looking for is that spot where the use that's allowed can be in harmony as best as possible. Well, I guess the point I'd like to make is that every time an educational institution does this, it erodes the support for the Dover Amendment, I think. Or it encourages the people who are affected, as Mike suggested the last time, to contact their state reps and uh, let them know that the Dover Amendment is unpopular. Mm -hmm. So I guess I come back to, is this a fight you want to pick? Is this where you want to spend your political capital? I think that we operate under the laws that are in effect today. I have no idea what the thinking of my Senator Rosenberg or uh, Representative Story is on that issue. I think that we um, plan, this has been in the planning stage for a no number of years. I mean, they've been all through MEPA, all through Natural Heritage, and all through CONCOM and DEP, and it has been planned for many years based upon the statutes of the Commonwealth. And there are many of them that I don't like either. Frankly, I like to drive more than 55 miles an hour. Um, but the law is the law, and and I think that it is but not... But I'm, I'm, beyond, I'm beyond that. Okay. I, you know, I think, I just want it to be clear that uh, of the people who are here today uh, on the board, yep. uh, three of us are Amherst College graduates and one is a UMass graduate, so we completely understand five colleges. And I think well, I don't know. What did you get for grades? Probably. <laughs> we have probably I know, all... I never, I never went in the library. We have probably <laughs> all... Or the annex? Uh, we probably all had a professor at one point or another saying, you could do better. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, again, it just comes down to... Uh, well, let me yes, you may have the right to do this, but is this what you, how you want to exercise that? We are here asking for the permission to do it. That is correct. We believe that we have made strides. We believe that it's a good use. We once again believe, I mean, I, I'm getting the sense that you don't necessarily believe me, but I don't think anybody's going to see this. I mean, yes, you can walk into a parking of the yard and look and see it in the, in the wintertime. But I don't think this is the big, bad um, development that you are uh, afraid of. Um, I think that we've demonstrated that it is well screened. You want a little better screen? We can put trees behind some people's houses. Um, we believe it's an appropriate size for its site. It's The building itself is 5% of the site. Whether 50% of the site is developable, 90% or 10%, I don't know, because we never looked at it. 
it from that perspective. So I just think that it's a way that um, this all fits into the scheme of the statute, fits into the goals of the colleges. You, the five colleges was asked by the colleges, by the directors, to go out and plan, permit, and build this facility, and that's what we're trying to do. And whether it be in Amherst or whether it be in Hadley or whether it be in Northampton, I